guys, Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this thrilling Thursday here in Connecticut. Life's good, man. It is a beautiful day. Just got in from a bike ride, going to knock this off, going back out for another bike ride, practice later this afternoon, an afternoon of writing and teaching. I'll tell you what, man, <laughs> I couldn't script a life any better than that. <laughs> anyway. You saw the thumbnail, mouthpiece scarring. This is almost part two to yesterday, mouthpiece pressure, okay? Now, once again, I haven't played a note, all right? So uh, let's do it, and we'll talk about mouthpiece scarring. Ooh. <laughs> Orange and apple. Yeah. Hellacious double C's. A little barbed wire with hiding on a different uh, trumpet. Guys, I couldn't be able to do that if my chops are all scarred up. It would take me hours and hours and hours of warm up to get to the point where I could do that. Okay, mouthpiece scarring. Now, let me start preface with this. Guys, I have picked a half dozen or so, I don't even know how many, trumpet players to talk about the scars on their lips. Nothing. Okay? These are phenomenal players. I am not knocking their musicianship or their playing ability or what they've done for the trumpet. I'm not knocking that at all. So please take all your venom and everything, go somewhere else. I'm just going to delete it. You're not going to get on. So sa save yourself the trouble. Okay? I am talking about chops. And at this point in my career, after my playing career, my time with Jerry, yes, I feel like I am an authority on chops. If you don't agree, go to another channel. But I am an authority certainly on the true power system and all things Calvin. And these are my beliefs. If we've learned anything from that social justice warrior, Colin Kaepernick, everybody can share an opinion. These are my opinions. Okay, now, mouthpiece scarring can come dozens of different ways. There's lots of variables. Do I use a dry armature, a wet armature? Um, a dry armature, even if you just screw it uh, through playing a little bit, you're going to tear. It's much easier to get the scarring and everything with a dry armature as a wet armature. Maurice Andre, we've all seen pictures of him with his tongue literally through the mouthpiece and into the cup when he's setting up. That sets, that sets up his chop, chops with the tongue, but it also gives him a wet armature. Okay? Lots of different ways to do it. But at the end of the day, let's keep it real. It's mouthpiece pressure over and over and over that does that. Okay, now, the poster boy for mouthpiece scarring is Louis Armstrong. Okay, I talked about that yesterday, so I'm not gonna get into it, but this is just, uh, the stories about it, taking a razor blade to the, to the scar tissue, oh my God, just painful, painful to think about, to listen to, to watch, and I told you that yesterday that if you haven't seen yesterday's video, check it out. 
Okay, I told you that uh, story about Eileen Farrell when they went for a sound check in the afternoon. <laughs> couldn't play. Literally could not play. Okay? And nobody seemed, as I said, the, the irony for, for Eileen was that nobody seemed the, the least bit concerned because they were used to it. This, this is life with Louie. Okay? The other guy, number two on the poster board, is Maynard. His chops are mangled terribly. Now, Overblowing, too much pressure for sure. Now, as you can see, as I'm going to say, all, all these great players that I'm talking about, guys, it can be done. It absolutely can be done. But why would you want to? Why would you want to? And for every single player that is crucifying their chops like this, there's millions of guys that can't do it. So why would you bother? When we have Jerome Callett playing triple and quadruple C's and not a mark on his lip anywhere, why would you want to do it any other way? Okay? Okay, so we got Maynard and we got Louie. Poster boys. Not known so much, guys, Arturo Sandoval. Extraordinary player. Okay? I have an issue with the Bach mouthpiece. I do. And I do feel that, in my opinion... I get killed for Arturo. In my opinion, Arturo Sandoval sounds better on some of those custom-made things, even though they are absolutely uh, based on the Bach 3C. With little, I think he sounds better on that. Now look at these. I mean, that looks painful to hurt, to, to look at. Now he is just about my age, and as great as he is, and as great as he still sounds, his chops are dissipating, okay? And there is tons of stuff all over the internet where he's playing and he's not warmed up, and man, it's a Louis Armstrong thing. It is not pretty when he doesn't warm up. That inferior mouthpiece. He used lots of pressure, guys, lots of it. If you watch him, I mean, he's crushing, crushing that one. Now, he gets extraordinary results. Extraordinary results. He's one of the all-time greats. Relax, all you guys. I, I, I'm not doubting that at all. But look at those chops. Uh, that's just painful to look at. Okay? Bill Chase, another one. I did it, uh, several videos on him. He, uh, I saw him at live, okay, at part of a clinic that we went back uh, backstage after a concert, guys, I've never seen anything so mangled in my whole life. It looked like he got punched in the mouth. It looked like he was literally in a fight. And every single punch that was landed to him was right on the same... I mean, it was just m mangled. Now, as we all know, he died young. Okay? Could he have kept that up till he was 50 or 60? I don't think so. I don't think so. Did he get extraordinary results for what he was doing? Yes. Okay. Now, Louis Maynard, Sandoval's a little bit different. And Chase, could they play soft and controlled? See what I'm saying? They all had the tongue working and all that sort of stuff. Each one of them was overblowing. Maybe not Louis so much. Now, Sandoval could play, does get by on some classical stuff, okay? But that's that. Now, Wynton Marsalis, mangled chomps, man, and I don't care what you say. For I heard him live. He was in New York when he first came to Juilliard. We all went down to the clubs to hear this wonderkin play with um, whatever band that he used to play with. And guys... He was a significantly better player when he was doing just Bach mouthpieces and Bach trumpets. No question about it. He's gone downhill. He hasn't played a um, live classical concert in 25 years. Okay? And look at the chops. They're mangled. I believe in this case, and that's the Monet trumpet. I think he would have had trouble with the box stuff anyway, down the road. But he, the minute he started on that godforsaken thing that does not center, it's just this big, wide, fluffy tone, 
He's tight. Now here's another one. Last but last, not least. Chris Bodie. Another guy, I'm not knocking his musicianship. He is a terrific trumpet player. But this guy is interesting in such, as you know, he is not playing these high octane gigs like the other guys are. Okay? But he's still mangling his chops. And he's not that old. What is he, late 40s, early 50s tops? That doesn't look good. That's not a good look. Okay? Now, guys, this is not to shake the finger at anybody and, and, and tell you how much I know and all this sort of thing. Each one of them, tremendous players that had extraordinary results, so it can be done. But, guys, why bother? If you don't think every single one of them, though, guys, if I said to them, look, go right up to double season, don't warm up every single one, you don't think they would have signed up for that? <laughs> you don't think they would have signed up for that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, this one and the, uh, yesterday, the mouthpiece pressure ones go hand in hand, okay? If you want to watch them, binge watch them like that, one right after the other, please do. But guys, it doesn't have to be that way. I'm barely holding the trumpet. I can teach anybody, anybody to do that. And the trumpet world is yours, Chico, and everything in it. Anyway. Eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all.